ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the inaugural episode of Made in Japan, a brand new show here from Pastiche of Skin, presented by me, Durham McGuigan, as you normally expect here on the channel. How's it going? It's good to see you guys all again. Thank you very much for watching. This is actually essentially a first 15 episode. I've been doing a fair amount of first 15 episodes lately, and this I have a group of ones I wanted to do all together because they, they're they sourced differently, is the thing is I'm actually doing. These are games that are all sourced from the PlayStation Network in Japan using a separate account and uh, completely legally, nothing, nothing untoward received and done to get this. Uh, real addresses, real numbers, everything's okay. But um, these are all demos and games that are available through the Japanese PSN. The, this game might look familiar to a lot of the audience because I've played this game before. Well, not this game, but a very similar game. This is Odin Sphere. This is the sequel to Odin Sphere, and it's been out for a while. I mean, th this isn't a brand new game by any stretch of imagination, but there is a demo of the gameplay on the Japanese store that isn't available on either the American or the UK stores. So, obviously, I pulled down a copy of it, and here's my favorite character, Scarlet. Ah, temptress woman. Just love her weapon as well. It's really, really cool. I just like, always like the idea of like balls on the end of chains. Just kind of like the, the, so many utilities, and uh, you'll get to see gameplay in this in just a little while of just how awesome Odin Sphere was. Now, anybody who doesn't know Odin Sphere, it was a game that came out originally on the PS2, and I'm pretty sure did it did it do anything else? I think it was a PS2 exclusive, and it blew my mind. I got put onto it by Penny Arcade. Uh, it just looks gorgeous in action. Because you can already see what kind of style it is, and you can hear the tone in the music. And of course, it came out in January of 2016. So let's just. Well, like, there's nothing to hold it back. Let's just get in here and give it a try. Now, I'm not going to play as any other character other than Scarlet, so get out of the way. Go away, Gwen. Go away, Cornelius. Go away, Mercedes. Go away, Oswald. Velvet is my girl. Velvet, Scarlet. Sorry. <laughs> it's just the fact that she is dressed in Scarlet. Now, the gameplay is, it's, it's a scroll and beat-em-up, that's, that's what this is, but it's a really flowy, beautiful, easy to play one. I mean, just in the first couple of seconds, you're not, I'm not being able to read any of the instructions on this, but, but I've got a basic general knowledge of this game from the PS2 era, so it's like not catching me off guard, but it just looks so quick and fluid, and oh, oh this game is gorgeous. It, 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 that's I can I can just gush about how pretty it is, and we get a little bit of spider manning Yay! So in this demo, it shows us through a series of stages, uh, battle stages from the beginning, not beginning, middle, and end of the game, but you know what I mean. There are um, of varying levels of difficulty. Uh, there's a mid boss and a final boss, and they are really obviously demo levels. They just get no context for each one of them. You just location, 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 location just to show the richness of the environments in this and the wonderful animation they put together for it. Oh, oh just destroying everything. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> just like casting fire on them and just let them burn while they just knock this other one around the room. So yeah, the, the stage clearance, uh, I'm probably gonna pull S's and A's on a lot of these just by hammering through them as fast as I can. It's, it's I, I found it kind of shocking that I was flowing so easily through it. Uh, there is a fair kind of like equipping and managing your character element to actually have the right gear uh, to take down things a little bit quicker with potions wise and health and that kind of thing. Is that uh, not exactly RPG-esque elements but it reminds me a lot of other games that came out very lately kind of like um, Dust and, and Legion Teal or what else was really like this. I mean the, the fact that I've been replaying through Guardian Heroes on my Sega Saturn is the reason why I'm kind of like massively impressed by the 2D scrolling beam up as a genre right now because it's something that I really want to show you guys. You have to check out Guardian Heroes. I, there was a remaster and re-release of it on the 360. If you can go and grab a copy of that, I'd highly recommend it. It's, um, it's a great game, great multiplayer, and a great 2D brawler in this kind of way. Like this, where you, but it has multiple endings and different paths you can take, so there's a lot of replayability rather than just completing it in the ones. Um, Odin Sphere, I can't even remember even. I, I don't know if Odin Sphere actually does do the same thing. I think it does the same thing. I think it does have the same um, path selection built into it. I don't know if it's actually. 
I don't know if it's actually a, a, a diverse path or it's just a character path, but I'm pretty sure it is set up that way. So let's continue on with our whip swinging, our chain linking, diamond smashing violence. Come on, just take it. Then we wander around. I, it's just I feel so much fun just to navigate in this world because the characters move so responsibly, and it's the little the little tweaks in the animation. I mean, it's still just 2D cells, but it's the uh, the way her run cycle is done. There's like a little bit of like undulation or like compression or stretching to the actual cell to make it look a little bit more flesh and human, or not human-like, but um, li alive. This whole thing is actually just screams of life. That's what I'm, um, while you're causing death, which is the, the wonderful bitter irony of it. But yeah, I'm just mauling everything in this game. Some of these combos, it doesn't feel uh, that I'm actually... Well, I am controlling them, obviously. I'm choosing high, low, or jump and attack. But uh, whenever like those special attacks occur, it's almost like I w will them to happen, but the button changes presses aren't changing in any way, shape, or form. Boom. Down you go. Another stage clear and more a few bonuses given. Less than a minute. So the um, the bonuses of extra items and potions and stuff, if you notice, I'm not using any of my potions right now. Uh, because I wanted to show you a cavalcade of violence whenever we get finished with it. Because I could probably make these things a little bit faster even, but I'm not going to use them until uh, we make headway towards the um, midway or to the last boss of the demo. Now, all these locations, I mean, it's... it's Simple enough place. I mean, we were there's no connection to them. Like this is just a village town, which is really nice. It's probably going to have a town guard. But the previous one was a giant fiery pit watching over a city burning, or an underground city burning. It's like there's so many places for the, for you to visit in this that even in the demo, you're just getting a teaser and they're just hammering you, like time hammer through as fast as I can, so you're just seeing as much as you can. The parallax scrolling of the backgrounds, the foreground. It's it's one of those things where. It's the little thing that we take for granted in gaming that we couldn't have done in really early era uh, scrolling beat scrolling beat -em ups or scrolling games. That, I think the parallax you know, of them two moving opposite each other. I, I love this boss fight as well, just because the backdrop is a it, lo it looks like a Fantasia scene, just with those the really fast spinning starscape above. Also, the fight it's fighting a giant mechanical horse, which is just weird. Boom! Down you go. Yeah! <laughs> Just the screams of characters dying. <laughs> Boom, right now he's way sprinting on. So now I'm probably got the possibility of him getting smashed in the f Yep, <laughs> that's exactly what I thought. He's pulling the whole flash around the world attack. Run faster and faster until he kills them all. I'll we'll swing up here and out of the way. Useful! Uh, so he dodges out of the way, and then I can just pummel everything. Boom! <laughs> it's just like whenever you kind of arc a characters up there, you got like floating in a combo, and you just grab somebody and just pull them through everyone else. It just, it's just really gratifying. Uh, I probably should have tried different gameplay with different characters, but I, 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 I think showing just even the one is enough, just to show. And they, and I, I don't think everybody would choose Velvet as their first character just because she actually is she doesn't do as hard of damage but she's very comboy so it just looks really cool. It's kind of like when, if you played Streets of Rage 2 and you chose Skit like it was always like kind of the, it was cool fast looking combos but didn't really do as much damage as the other characters it's the reason why everybody chose Max, he was so OP <laughs> uh. so yeah Odin Sphere, this is actually, um, like I said, a PS2 game that's been done up. Not done up, but done anew. I, I would love to know if it's actually a whole new storyline or if it's actually just an extended game from the past, but this is going to be on my watch list for what I'm going to do and play at some point soon because. I could I could just I could just see myself just disappearing into this like I had to actually play this game. 
and then record the audio separately because there's no way I was going to like think about talking whenever I'm just hammering through combos like that. Just like I'm, it's hitting all the little. Um, do you know, like the same things that happen whenever you use like gambling machines, like the little ding, 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 ding. Like, it's hitting all those little sensitive little buttons for me of just um, of of gameplay because like, this is my bread and butter that I really enjoy. And into the cave. No. Box first, then into the cave. <sighs> Refreshing. Just cool as ice. <laughs> it's just the fact that they refer to this as a rest stage, just to kind of like uh, give you a place to run through. That's not exactly the most restful thing in the world, just watching all of the elephant graveyard come to life behind you. This is just actually to show you where the um, store in the game is as well. It's kind of like uh, what the store master looks like. Which is <laughs> honestly quite creepy. <laughs> creepy guy. I can generally tell what most of these things are just by their lettering. Like, H is for health, C is for cold, L is for lightning, you know. Kind of makes it a little bit easy. You can see how many I have now. So, like, see all that gear? Let's see if we can go and use it all in one thing. <laughs> Yeah, you got none for me, dude. Let's move on. Let's check that again. Yep. Yeah. Everything's equipped. Boom. Oh, it's gravy, baby. Let's go and kill something with great prejudice. Yes, I am sure. Are you sure you want to go and kill this thing? Yes, I am sure. Okay. So, hi there, dragony boy. Half up. Uh, that's I'm just, all the green ones are going to be health. So through all the rest of those, so that's more wind, wind, earth, wind, and fire. And there goes one of your energy bars. <laughs> I do love this one. It's a much bigger spell. Boom! Boom! Look at that chingo! It's just the fact that you go to the bottom of animating the AOE of your spell on the little box in the car top right, which shows the action on the scene. It's, just, oh. it's like that little extra bit of gravy to me. It looks so good. Oh, crap. I missed that one anyway. Doesn't really matter. This guy's still on fire. He ain't going to stop burning anytime soon. <laughs> Alright, combo's up to 200. Uh, let's just make it so that I can just cast all my spells one after another. Yeah! Keep burning! Burn! <laughs> just burning him under the ground because he can't escape. <laughs> Even like the fact that you can throw armor that's on the floor towards him is actually like extra damage. As we come to the close and he falls to my winsome charms and beat downs with gems. I want to say thank you very much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. This has been a first episode for Made in Japan. There will be many more like this coming very, very soon, and I hope you guys look forward to listening to them and watching them and enjoying the games that are you're probably never going to get to play at home. So until that time, I love you, you love me, and let's all do this again some other time as I see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.